Hello, I'm Super Trampoline. Welcome to another edition of Super Trampoline's Bad Fanfic Theater. Today I'll be reading one of my own stories. Rarity listens to Redbone. And as you can hear, we have the band next door to us playing I Think Handsome Man by uh, Smiths? The Cure? I don't know. Late 80s, mid 90s, I don't know. Anyway. So, uh, in this story, uh, Rarity is a fan of the only Native American band to have a top five hit. Huh, who knew? Also, Twilight kidnaps a bunch of young ponies for really creepy, but stupid reasons. I wrote this while I was really high. Apparently, I get pervasive when I'm high. Right. So, Rarity listens to Redbone, the first and only chapter, which is just a little over a thousand words. I really hope that that band next door is not too loud. <laughs> hope you can hear me. Not that you'd be missing much if you couldn't. All right, let's see if I can balance this right here. Oh, I can. All right, come and get your love. Wait, Rarity, Twilight inquired. You listen to fish, it's not fishbone. You listen to redbone? Why, yes, dear, I do. Why are you so surprised? Twilight held the offending cassette player in front of her, which contained the tape potlatch with it then its angular folds. Well, I mean, they're kind of obscure. Most, pony, most ponies only know their one hit, come and get your love. What hooked you? Well, Twilight, not to surrender my fashionable hipster persona, but I do confess I had some assistance in picking such an obscure band to listen to. The Pony Village Voice did a retrospective on various bands that were featured in the Guardians of the Galaxy Awesome Mixtape Volume 1, highlighting many of those bands' long-lost albums outside of their one-hit wonder status. And Redbone was one of those bands, but on Alicorn Music, an earlier album that the, than the one containing Come and Get Your Love was the highest rated, and that album was Potlatch, which I felt to be a fine mix of funk and rock and jazz and pop and the right amount of indigenous flavoring. Thus I bought it, and now have it in the cassette player you just played. Twilight rolled her eyes. Fucking hipsters, I swear to goddess. Rarity playfully whacked Twilight with her tail. Oh, hush, you're, hush you. Jealousy is no pretty outfit for you to wear. Twilight rolled her eyes even harder. Right, well, I did ask to borrow your cassette player for a reason. May I? Rarity smiled warmly. Of course, dearie. Just make sure to have it back to me by Thursday night. Twilight saluted her friend. You have my word, miss. She maintained the serious scowl with which this command was delivered, but could only hold it up for a second before both mares cracked up, <laughs> giggling. Rarity embraced her friend. Oh, Twilight. Yet, oops, that's a typo. Let us never take ourselves too seriously. Twilight smiled warmly and reciprocated the embrace. Of course not, friend. I'll see you tomorrow. Thus concluding their interaction for the day, Rarity trotted into her boutique, and Twilight turned to walk back to her castle. Huh. She had gotten used to that term, castle. She even dared consider the fact that to utter the phrase, my library, was at this point equivalent to uttering something unabashedly alien. That was the past. Now she lived in the future. This was a future of science and magic and friendship and glory. And in this brave new world, Twilight trotted back, not to a library, but a castle. Yes, the castle of friendship. It had a nice ring to it. Twilight smiled. This series of thoughts sustained said smile until she reached her abode. <clears throat> Twilight stepped into the main foyer, where three fillies sat tied to three chairs. Yes, it is true. I'm sorry to report. Twilight had kidnapped the cutie mark crusaders. Cheesy fucking crust. What the actual fuck, Twilight? Applebloom spat with sour anger. Being a teenager, she was currently at the stage of life when she thought making every other word an expletive was the fucking tits to do. Her bound compadres had similar sentiments and threw up similar expletive-soaked invective tirades in their captor's direction. But Twilight Sparkle was nothing if not prepared, and soon she had recorded several minutes of the CMC's increasingly terrified and genuine whining, producing the ideal atmosphere in which the three pubescent fillies would be genuinely scared fearful of the very real possibility that Twilight Sparkle had lost her fucking shit and was currently mentally ill, or at least running on several times as many bath salts as any respectable pony ought to have consumed in a 36-hour period. Don't do drugs, foals. 
Twilight, having collected desired samples she so scientifically craved, used her exquisite alicorn magic to loose the robes from the bodies of the crusaders. Shoe kids, she requested as she rendered their ambulatory aspirations no longer addled. The cutie mark crusaders did not need to be asked twice and scrambled out of Twilight's castle like Scooby-Doo and Shaggy would scramble away from the hallucinations of ghosts and ghouls and Gabby Gums after each having a 500 milligram Scooby snack. They skedaddled the fuck out of there and ran off to tell their parents, Sweetie Belle, siblings, Apple Bloom, or adoptive older sister, Scootaloo, that Twilight had completely lost the pot, uh, plot and was in a word bonkers. Nay, let us emphasize her lunacy in the lurid descriptions the three fillies provided. She wasn't just bonkers, she was fucking bonkers. Yes, that's indeed better. Thusly, in swift time, the trio communicated the dire nature of the situation to parents slash guardians. And inasmuch, Rainbow Dash, Applejack, Big Macintosh, Magnum, and Betty Buffont, or whatever her name is, all simultaneously charged Twilight's castle, eager to establish just what fucked up fuckery was aspiring at the castle. Twilight, meanwhile, absconded over to one of the multitudinous guest rooms, sprouting o all over the castle in many locations suitable for a guest room. In this particular guest room, she had the cake twins, also bound such that the bulk of their bodies were was constrained from significant motion. They too cried a most distressed and voluminous cry, and Twilight again recorded the wail of unhappiness. This she accomplished again with Rarity's trusty cassette player, though with a blank tape, not the one Rarity had previously had in there. She thus had her two data points and teleported down to the lab, where she began to play back the tapes and crunch the numbers. <coughs> In short order, the CMC, their parent guardians, and also Cupcake and Carrot Cake, since their children were also missing, all descended upon Twilight's fortress of science and questionable data entry. They rushed into Twilight's castle, quickly overwhelming the sparsely stationed guards and breaking down the door to her laboratory. Twilight turned as they leapt for her. Oh good, you are here. I have just determined that a toddler's crying is more annoying than a teenager's crying. I thus deem toddlers more annoying than teenagers. That is all I borrowed your children for. This was a fucking awful excuse for Twilight's clearly libertarian behavior. Hey, I had to sneak that joke in somewhere. And the affirmation pony is made as clear to Twilight by thoroughly pummeling her, breaking two ribs, one leg, a collarbone, and a horn. Twilight totally deserved it. Rarity turned in the offending tapes to the police and then burned the cassette player. She could buy a new one that wasn't definitely cursed. And Twilight now is at the San Palomino Institute for the Criminally Insane. Real shame, really. I don't know how she ended up this way. Bummer. And that is that. We have an author's note here at the end. With, uh... The Kitty Mark Crusaders tied up, but, like... A safe picture, not, like... Clop. And the caption is... You have any idea how much tickle fetish pictures I had to search through? Shift through to find this? Even in safe surfs mode? Fuck, this is definitely one of the top five weirdest stories I've written. And it is... And that concludes another episode of uh, Super Trampoline's uh, Super Bad Fanfic Theater. Hope you enjoyed.